recently one of the questions I've got in the comment section is why we pay as collectors more for action figures from companies like NECA or Super 7 versus what we pay at retail. I mean, when you break these figures down, they're essentially the same thing. Maybe we get a little bit more piece count, but is the difference really making up the price difference between you know, a $20 figure and a $50 figure that we're buying from one of these smaller toy companies. Now with most things, this comes down to MOQ, minimum order quantity. And why is it that these toys from smaller companies cost more? It's because they're not producing the MOQ. The minimum order quantity is what a factory charges any company to turn their machines on and start making product. They wanna be able to make, say, I'm making this number up, 50,000 units. Let's say that's the MOQ. And that's because it's very expensive and time-consuming to set up the assembly line and the process. Think of it kind of like when we were kids or, well, actually even when we're adults and, you know, you're setting up a board game, right? Well, you have to take it out of the closet. You have to set up all of the little pieces. You have to count out the money. You have to put out the chance cards and community chest. Okay, I'm being very Monopoly specific here. Actually, maybe a better example might be something like Mousetrap, where you actually have to set up your equivalent of an assembly line, right? What, what you're assembling is the trap, but you have to put all these pieces together and it could take anywhere from five to 20 minutes before you're actually playing the game. That's the key right there, is that setup time is directly related to MOQ. Because once the machines are on, yeah, you could just pump these figures out, but the time it takes to individually set up an assembly line for every single individual action figure one Batman figure is not the same as the next. There's gonna be different paint ops, there's going to be different accessories, different tools. And every single time you paint an action figure, you have to retrain your painting staff to paint that specific figure. And that's time consuming. You know, you have to do, you know, actually go out and say, okay, this is how to paint the figure, these are the mistakes, throw this one out, let's start again. There's a process. It's not like you just pick it up and instantly are perfect at getting the figure right. So they're, they're, it's very, very time consuming every time you're setting up a new assembly line. You can't just walk in and say, okay, everyone, we're done making Spider-Man toys today. Now we're making Power Rangers. It doesn't work that way. They have to scrap everything, start it all over again, and reset it up for the next figure. This is why factories charge this MOQ. It's very much like factories have kind of always been. They want to be able to produce one thing and do it well, and if they have to switch to a different product, they're going to pass that cost off to the manufacturer who wants that product made in the factory. So all any time that a company is now producing below the minimum order quantity, well, that difference then gets passed off to the manufacturer, meaning the vendors are going to charge more money to a manufacturer like a Mattel, a Hasbro, a Spin Master, if they ask that vendor to produce below the MOQ. If the vendor will even do that, some won't. What you're doing is making up the difference between the price of an MOQ and the price below it. So let's say a $20 action figure, the factory charges you $5 to make that. Well, if you're producing below the MOQ that the factory requires in order to set up an assembly line, they're going to then charge that manufacturer a premium price, maybe $10 a figure instead of $5 a figure. And that cost then gets passed along to the consumer. That's exactly why Super 7, as an example, charges between $50 and $70 for a figure that at retail might be closer to $20 or $30. Now, the other thing fans question a lot is, okay, well, if I'm paying so much more for a figure, shouldn't I get more bells and whistles? Shouldn't I get not just more accessories, but premium paint and, you know, premium packaging and, and, you know, all sorts of things, premium quality control. And the thing is, not really. You're getting the exact same quality control, the exact same paint that anything else is getting. The upcharge is not for better quality control. It's simply because you're below the MOQ. Essentially, companies are making up the difference between the MOQ and whatever below the MOQ they're producing at. So no, a higher price point at a vendor is not gonna get you premium deco, and it's also not gonna get you premium quality control. When you're buying an action figure that costs more, that is very similar to figures in an assortment, it's often because it's produced 
lower than the factory wants to produce. And therefore, the manufacturer, the Mattels, the Hasbros, the Spin Masters, the Jacks, they're going to pay the difference. And then that difference gets passed along to the consumer, you and me, and we wind up paying 50 to $60 for an action figure that might otherwise be 20 or 30 at retail. And that is why action figures from smaller companies cost more, because they're making way fewer, and that additional premium price is making up the difference between what the factory charges for MOQ and what they're charging below MOQ for this particular figure that a company may want to make. I hope you enjoyed this video and it pointed out some of the rationale and reasons why smaller runs cost more. It's all about assembly lines and all about the time and energy it takes to set this up. Thanks for watching, thanks for sharing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope this was insightful.